we'd like to welcome to the podcast today, Trudy Chapa. Trudy is owner of Parker Fit Body Boot Camp that just opened. Woo-hoo. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, she also owns the Connection Spot in Castle Rock, a core co-working space for entrepreneurs, small business businesses, and remote workers. Everybody gives me all these little, these big words to say. <laughs> I do not read out loud very well. She calls herself your start partner and acceleration coach. I love that for you. Her mission is to mess with the status quo and help people spend their lives achieving things they never dreamed possible. Yes, please. (laughs) Uh, She is the mom of three wonderful kids, a personal development lover, a process and systems thinker. I feel you. <laughs> a passionate student and of the neuroscience and creativity of body movement, a high performance researcher, and a complete business geek. This is very true. She spent 20 years in the tech industry leading teams and sparking their intrapreneurial spirit to connect to the business and drive massive value. I love this for you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm Yay. so excited. All right, this is always the first question. What was your very, very first job, and what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, my gosh. So first job, um, I think I worked at a new startup concept for Pizza Hut. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. It was Pizza Hut and Pasta Cafe and uh, the Utah Jazz. I grew up in Utah, so the Utah Jazz players came, and I always thought that was so cool. Because <laughs> I got to serve, like, to Carl Malone, yeah, really John cool. Stockton. It's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a fun job. I think um, I was overwhelmed by the idea of serving. I couldn't keep track of orders. And now as an adult, I'm like, man, I really want to go back and do that again. I think I would rock that role now. <laughs> Processes and systems. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. So, and then what was the other question? What did you want to be when you grew up? Um, you know what? I always wanted to own my own business. I always did. Um, I just had a lot of ideas and I went to school specifically for business, um, Mm -hmm. but I went to a technology school, so I went to DeVry. Um, but coming out with a business degree doesn't do much in the world. (laughs) You kind of have to have a little experience before you can go do something, right? So, so I came out with a business degree and I had a bunch of tech understanding and that was the world where no one did right now. Our kids blow us away, but, Mm -hmm. um, I had you know, a bunch of tech understanding and a business degree. So I ended up landing in tech and, um, and learning a lot there and, and doing really well and having fun in tech for those 20 years. (laughs) I love that. So that was actually kind of my next question. So what were your, what were the keys to your successes, um, in tech? Do you think? Um, I think for me, it's always been about, um, not taking any role as what's defined, Mm -hmm. like really just creating the role based on what you're good at, Mm -hmm. what you think you can add from Mm -hmm. a value perspective, identifying what the business is trying to do, and then defining the role for your team around you, defining the role for your management Mm because they're not on the front lines. They kind of create these job descriptions and say, here you go. This is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. But they really don't know what they don't know until that, you know, you get in there and start doing the roles. So I think my success has always been based on, you know, really just diving in and figuring out what can I add to Mm -hmm. the organization? How can I connect into what their goals are? What is my leadership's goals? What is my manager's goals? Mm -hmm. What are my, you know, surrounding team members' goals? And then, you know, really kind of tying that to the value I can add, my Mm -hmm. my own expertise. And so the people that worked for you got to do that stuff too. That's right. They got to like work in, you know, what, what, they can in value add. Yeah, that's, that's really right. Awesome. I mean, it, it, for me, it, the, the management side of things is so fun just because you really do get to understand what your team is capable of and spending that time to find where their sweet spot is mm-hmm. and then just helping them <laughs> narrow that in and explode mm-hmm. and really add value to the organization. It's it's fun to do. That's yeah. awesome and yeah. rare. I don't know. Is it rare? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, think not, I think not as much anymore. But I think most management doesn't know how to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think as you have the different levels and the different tiers mm-hmm. in management, you, they become more and more disconnected to the teams below. Right. And so if you have people in those different levels, I think absolutely, um, if they're connecting and finding out what their team is most capable of delivering and mm-hmm. the value they can add, and then the level below and the level below, then, I mean, really, you can execute at high levels across the board. I love it. Yeah. What were the greatest obstacles? Greatest obstacle. <laughs> You're like, I have so many. <laughs> In hmm. corporate? Yeah. <laughs> Doing that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think, 
You know, the greatest obstacles have, are always just kind of the the old way of doing things, the mm. old way of thinking. Right. I think um, when you meet up with leadership that believes that it needs to be done a certain way and aren't open to looking at things a different way, mm -hmm. I mean, it really can become a roadblock. It can become a roadblock completely to any success the organization is going to have. So um, I think to overcome the obstacles, mm -hmm. I've always told people, come up with a different way to... <laughs> Ask them the question, mm -hmm. to tell them what you're trying to get across, mm -hmm. to show them where the opportunity exists. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's my my passion is always to overcome anything that hits me. I think it's a game. I, <laughs> business is a game. I told you I'm a business geek. So you are. I love business it. Business is a game to me. So if there's an obstacle that presents itself, then I'm doing something wrong. What what can I do differently to make that um, to make that obstacle be removed? I love it. Right. I love it. So a few years ago, you decided to open a co-working space. I did. I love it. What um, what did that process look like? Um, wow, a lot of unknown, <laughs> like a lot where, of mistakes how, to be made. What? Yeah. yeah. So um, it it's in Castle Rock, and I think it started out with a totally different concept, which I think most businesses will be. Mm -hmm. um, we thought that I, I initially being in tech wanted to change the way business was done in a restaurant mm -hmm. because by default all business is done in a restaurant and they don't know how to interact with people that are there to do business. Mm -hmm. You get interrupted constantly and you can't you can't actually have a client conversation or a prospect conversation. So I actually wanted to start a whole new concept of a restaurant that was technology focused, oh, wow. on demand. <laughs> And as business ideas do, mm -hmm. it never ends the way that it starts. Mm -hmm. um, and as I explored more and more, I um, was a little overwhelmed by the idea of opening a restaurant. That yes. is a big endeavor for someone that knows nothing about restaurants. <laughs> so that that was good. So I peeled that layer back <laughs> and said, okay, what do I have Not left? Not a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have left? And, and it really came down to, you know, how do I help people do business in general? Mm -hmm. And I'm so passionate about the balance of, you know, working hard and having a um, productive business environment, but also about having an area where you can take a break and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of rest and relax and stretch and maybe even get your exercise in. So mm -hmm. then I started creating an environment that had co-working, which I didn't know was called co-working at the mm -hmm. time, but um, an environment that had the business aspect plus a cafe or a lunch area, mm -hmm. plus a um, kind of almost like a meditation room to relax, to de-stress, mm -hmm. plus you know, a place to move your body and to exercise. Mm -hmm. um, as I started exploring more and more, I discovered that co-working was actually an industry. And it was new at the time. We opened about three and a half years ago. It was just taking off. It's almost like executive suites switched mm -hmm. with collaboration mm -hmm. or, or flipped a bit to, to add collaboration with the business um, folks that are in the space. Mm -hmm. And um, I fell in love with it. I thought it was great. This is how business is supposed to be. <laughs> and so, um, you know, as I was looking for spaces in Castle Rock and, and trying to add all the pieces I wanted, mm -hmm. um, again, just as any business idea comes to fruition, you peel back more and more <laughs> layers and that you start with something that's simple. Mm -hmm. And what I started with was um, just a standard co-working space, a collaboration area without the cafe, without the gym, without, mm -hmm. you know, this de-stress kind of environment. But a co-working space that that allowed people to come together and and really collaborate on their ideas. It it um, and it fosters not only entrepreneurs and small business owners, but remote workers because it's hard to work by yourself at your home, it <laughs> and it's hard to be productive. And and you know it, where I really fell in love with it is because I was in tech and I was a remote worker for 15 years of that. Um, you can only sit across your kitchen table from your husband so long and. <laughs> And you can only uh, get, be as productive as your household is clean. And right. so, <laughs> you There's need so to many remove. other things to do. <laughs> and and um, getting out of your jammies every once in a while and, and uh, getting dressed for the day is, is always super valuable from a productivity standpoint. So, <laughs> so I think that's, I mean, that's, it really fell into um, and, and became modeled into what it is today, which is just a home for, for, you know, those that are independent and those that are starting companies to be able to collaborate with folks as well as be super productive outside of their house. I love it. What have been some of the biggest obstacles to the connection spot? Mm -hmm. um, I think 
helping people understand why it's important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think um, it's an education process. People um, don't understand that, well, if in a lot of folks that are working from their home, it's especially when they first start out, they're like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I want. I have the freedom, the flexibility. But we, as people, are meant to be around other people. That's where Mm -hmm. ideas come. That's where our creativity is sparked. That's where our motivation and productivity comes. Mm -hmm. And um, but to get that across to people that they that they truly will, you know, skyrocket their productivity, it's um, it's an education. And and I think that's the hurdle is just getting the word out and getting people aware of what an environment like this can do for their careers and for their businesses Mm -hmm. that they're launching. So I think that's, it's been hard. It's been interesting. (laughs) (laughs) It's a great space. Yes, I love our space. I I love love our space. space. Are you guys expanding this space sometime soon? I know there was plans for that. Yeah, so we thought about that, but um, you know, right now it's it's funny because co-working, the environment, everybody wanted the open space. I remember back when I started in tech, it was you know, we opened everything up and it was just desks everywhere and you could throw paper airplanes across the room <laughs> at each other. And, and it kind of, you know, co-working started that way as well. It's mm-hmm. like, let's just put everybody in a big room, like a bullpen mm-hmm. and have them all work together. But um, the reality is you still need your time to break away, to be able to have meetings, to have phone calls, to have, you know, quiet time. And, mm-hmm. and um, so it's still a model that I think is being worked. I think, um, that folks are still playing with it. They're still realizing, okay, we do need um, private offices. We do need, you know, closed off spaces to really be productive, but then we need to be able to come out of those spaces and collaborate and, and share ideas mm-hmm. and and come together over, you know, a water cooler, so to speak. But um, for us in Castle Rock, it's um, it's a growing environment. So, I mean, I think there's another co-working space coming out in Castle oh, really? Rock. So. I think it's it's definitely an environment that is going to um, foster more of it. Mm-hmm. But I think we just we're we're happy where we're at right now and continuing to just um, grow it to see see what we can do for the the community. But yeah, I love that it creates community. It does create community. Yeah, and ideas and you know the ability to talk to other people and yeah. you know, have face to face interactions. And, and I think I mean because everyone just like in corporate, everyone mm-hmm. has their own expertise. Everyone mm-hmm. has something to offer another person. And so when you get a chance to get around people that are super motivated because they're you know they're remote workers or they're entrepreneurs or mm-hmm. small business owners, mm-hmm. they have some awesome knowledge mm-hmm. that if you get around some of that oh my gosh you can just yeah you it's can, just the energy too that's right you get to share energy with other people yeah. instead of it just kind of dissipating off into the rest of the <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> where did it go how do i model it <laughs> that's awesome um so your latest endeavor is opening the fit body boot camp yes um in southern denver so you have three we're going to have, th- you have, I'll have three. three. Yeah. How, why did you choose that specific franchise? Yeah. So, I mean, again, going back to why I wanted to open a co-working space, mm-hmm. it was this passion around just what moving our bodies does for our brains. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's that neuroscience of creativity and body movement. I mm-hmm. mean, you got to stand up, you got to take intentional breaks. You got to move your body and be healthy in order to truly accelerate everything you do. Mm-hmm. And, um, I wanted that all tied with coworking. I wanted this big, beautiful, massive space <laughs> that people walked into and had everything there. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, love that. I just love that idea. So, and, and so passionate about it for, for corporate, for business, for startups. I mean, coming from tech, we work 10, 15, you know, mm-hmm. too long. We work long, long hours and um, we don't move from our desks. Mm-hmm. And, and you just see it kind of take the toll from a stress standpoint, mm-hmm. from bodies and health, you know, and it just, it kills me to watch because if people would just take the time to stop and really take a break, they actually will be more productive. They actually will move faster in everything they do. And um, rather than reinvent the wheel, because I know systems, because I know how to manage in a corporate environment mm-hmm. and manage resources, mm-hmm. I didn't want to start a gym by myself mm-hmm. to to create an environment like this, to, to show what the value of body movement can do for mm-hmm. you personally in your life and in, in your careers and, and just in your own personal space. I didn't want to reinvent that wheel. I didn't mm-hmm. want to start that. So I looked for the, all the different available franchises and really wanted to go with a model that I know people can implement. Um, I think people overcomplicate staying mm-hmm. healthy. 
Um, and there's all the fad diets out there and there's all the, like, I've got to work out of the gym for two hours to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a busy person and, and everybody's busy these days and we've got a lot of things we want to do. And it doesn't take as much as I think everyone thinks it takes. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's about lifestyle and it's about just incorporating this in your day to day. And so the model of the Fit Body Boot Camp is that it's a 30 minute workout and we do nutrition coach coaching, but it's but it's about lifestyle nutrition in mm -hmm. that what are the small tweaks we can make to ensure that you're healthier? And so that whole model combined with the 30 minute workouts that mm -hmm. I mean anyone can do. That's less than two percent of your day. Anyone can get in there for 30 minutes. Um, and then adding the the nutrition coach coaching on side with just the accountability and the support, it's like, okay, this is the piece. This mm -hmm. is the fundamental fuel everybody needs, the foundation to what I hope everyone can grasp onto so that really they can, you know, kind of accelerate all the other things they have, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where it goes back to, um, you know, my, my concept of I, I want to help people ach achieve what they think is impossible. Right. And, and to me, this is that starting point. I love it. And yeah. I like that you picked it based on it, like, the ease of impl implementation for yeah. people. Yeah. Like, it's 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes. Can yeah, I mean, who can't do 30 minutes, yeah. right? Can it's... you do 30 minutes? And you see results. I mean, the, right. the, the whole process is it's an intense 30 minutes, mm -hmm. in and out. But, man, your metabolism gets revved up for mm -hmm. another 36 hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it does what it needs to do. But, I mean, if you think about what you do in a gym, and, you know, I, I'm a fitnessaholic, but mm -hmm. you think about even me at a gym, I spend, you know, if you spend an hour kind of futzing around and going from place to place and doing some, you know, whatever, some weights and maybe some cardio, I mean, if you really condense that all, it was probably less of less than 30 minutes of intense exercise. Yeah, actual exercise. And that's, and that's why, you know, if we just do intentional focus on that 30 minutes, you're going to get the results. And I, love it. and I love that, right? So that, that was, that was really why I went after it. And I have to say, if, if anyone has ever followed Fit Body, um, Bedros Koulian, he's, he's just an amazing person and mm -hmm. he's fun to listen to. He's fully transparent, high integrity, and I only do business with people that I love. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, he's, he's a great, uh, mentor and, you know, he's, he's a speaker of, you know, on the business side, but also on, on the fitness side, he's written this recent book, Man Up, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I just, I really respect him as well. So I think it just all came together that that was the right place for me to start this um, part of you know the big picture. That's so awesome. <laughs> I love it. So, what are the long range plans for Fit Body Boot Camp? So, um, for me right now, I've got, I mean near term, next couple of years, super focused on getting the locations open. So we have one in Parker mm -hmm. that we just um, launched. Yay! Yay! I love it. Grand opening. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are running. You know, we'll be through our New Year New You challenge or halfway through our New Year New You challenge. Um, which is super exciting. And then I have Castle Rock and Lone Tree to get open as well. So I want to get those spaces open. I want to get everybody in and I want our members to be a community. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, it, for me, it's about not only the 30 minutes they're in our, in our doors mm -hmm. doing the workout, but it's the other 23, ha 23 and a half hours of the day that mm -hmm. we're supporting them. So I want that community built and I want that to feel strong and everybody to be connected before I move to the next step. But with Fit Body, it's three locations this year and hopefully five locations by 2022. That's awesome. So that's I the love goal. it. That's the goal. 30 minutes. We can all do 30 minutes. Absolutely. I know. Oh, that sounds better than my hour this morning. <laughs> <laughs> And every once in a while, I have to say, yeah, it's fun gotta, to go. We got to jump out the hour. Run or... <laughs> no running. No running. No running. <laughs> bike. Yeah, it was the bike this morning. <laughs> Bikes and weights. That's about all I got. Bikes and weights. Um, so your passion has always been understanding the science of movement and how that integrates with productivity. Yeah. So you're, one of the, your next things, too, is to open your moto break method. So talk a little bit about that. I think you yeah. kind of have. But, you know, what does that look like and how does that help people? Yeah. So the moto break method, I mean, it's it, it really this all comes back together and just – helping people understand how to go throughout their day with integrating exercise and intentional breaks to really increase their energy and productivity. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, there's so many things that come along with that. Your focus, your creativity, you know, just your performance in general. 
So um, that's one of the projects I'm working on is, is once we get FitBody up and running, I want to launch the Motor Break Method to individuals and corporations to really just help folks stand up from the desk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think everyone is deceived in thinking that they have to just keep cranking away, keep cranking away. Mm -hmm. And our brains are just not made to do that. <laughs> we no, can't. They're not. <laughs> they, I mean, they, we, we need the breaks, and that's how creativity happens. I mean, if you even just think, you guys can all reference it, step away, mm -hmm. and where do your ideas come from? When you're in the shower, when you're on a walk, when you're on a drive. I mean, you have to step away in order to create. Mm -hmm. And so um, this just... This whole method is about how to integrate that into your day to really accelerate, you know, the business to accelerate your career. That's awesome. So that's the fun project that's on the horizon. That is so great. I'm always like driving and I'm like, oh, I forgot to do that thing. <laughs> or, oh, hey, there's that idea I've been like marinating on for, you know, the last week or whatever. And it's like, ah, uh, if I would just do those intentional breaks, my brain might work a little. That's right. Little. That's right. You know where it, um, it really started to come together for me? My brother had challenged me to do a Tough Mudder, and I was scared to death. I'm I'm a sports person, but mm -hmm. I'm not a runner. 13 miles, and, and it just scared me to death. And I, I'm also very competitive, mm -hmm. so I did not want to be the last of the pack mm -hmm. with a crew that has done the Tough Mudder a million times. And I'm thinking, there is no way. I, thir 13 miles, are you kidding? I can run a couple miles, That's maybe. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> so, so I've never been a runner. I've been, you know, volleyball player and, and other things. But um, so I started getting on a treadmill. And I'm like, I am not going to be last. I'm not going to be last, right? <laughs> and that was my motivation. And I mean, this was years I ago. I love that. This was probably like, you know, seven years ago and I started running. And and it was painful at first. And, and I didn't get how people could settle in and right. just run and disappear. And I'm telling you what, there was this point in which when I got so conditioned that it only took about three minutes and I'd settle in mm -hmm. and I call it like going through the pinhole, like I'd just disappear <laughs> and my brain would just create. I mean, it just, I, all the ideas would come together and I'd be constantly writing. I'm not, my <laughs> phone would be next to me and I'd be typing my, in the phone. <laughs> and, and then I'd like after, I mean, then I use this the time, the hour or two hours to just write, 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 write. Um, and that's where a lot, I mean, that's how a connection spot was built actually. Mm -hmm. And then the whole concept of motor break was, was built because I learned that this idea of disconnecting mm -hmm means something it that's matters awesome. I mean and and so anyway that's I don't know how I got on that but it's no I love it <laughs> it's a really good example of you know what happened when you did create like you integrated that movement yeah yeah um I was trail running this last summer to get ready for the Spartan race. You didn't run, see? Well, it, it, I had it's to. It's out of fear. It was it's 15 miles. <laughs> <laughs> they told me it was 13, but it was that 15. was a lie. <laughs> it was 15. Um, but uh, yeah, like I was like, I have to be able to do the thing, and I hate running. Yeah. And of course, it was like in Breckenridge, so it's like Brutal. mountains on top of the fact that I don't run. Yeah. Um, so I was trail running. Because I was like, I have to yeah. at least be able to do a few miles, take a break, you know, and then do a few more. But once I get past that one mile, like once that first mile clicks yeah. in, then I can, then I feel like, okay, we can, you know, we you can, can go. Kind of, we your can. body settles in, your mind <laughs> calms down, you find a you yeah. know, rhythm. And, yeah. and I always have to remind myself, just get past that first mile. Like that's all that's you're right. required to do. <laughs> if it sucks after that, you can stop. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no more Spartan race ever again. Never but again. No, never oh, again. Oh man, man, I I did the I've done the Tough Mudder three times, mm -hmm. and I thought I'd never do it again. But you know what keeps me going is doing it with my brother. <laughs> That's because right. Because it's so fun to do it to be able to run with him. It's it's cool. That's so. awesome. <laughs> no, my recovery from the Spartan was not pretty. <laughs> More, more, yeah, more stretching, more yeah, time. Yeah, it was more, more expensive something. on the back end than it was to actually <laughs> do the no race. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have to say, you, like, you impressed me because people want to do the Tough, uh, tough Mudder here in Colorado, and I'm like, no, mm. that's that. No, that's so <laughs> not happening because it is straight up and straight down. Yeah, it was a lot and, of, yeah, yeah. No, Arizona. And you know what? You come down from those mountains, yeah. you can run forever. Well, and some of the Spartans are like in stadiums. I'm like, yeah, that, that I can handle. Do. That's, That's what almost it. like not even outside. <laughs> so, yes, I have only accomplished the Tough Mudder in um, sea level <laughs> and no climbing. So, yeah. yeah I... It was just all of the repetitive like downhill movement oh, that yeah. was just so hard on my back. That's brutal. 
Oh, no, never again. <laughs> all right, we totally went way off. Sorry. There. That's okay. <laughs> no problem. Happens all the time. <laughs> so before I ask you um, my last question, where is the, or what is the easiest way for people to find you? The easiest way? So you should have prepped me for this question because I don't know. That's no. okay. We'll link, we'll link them all and the, we, can, we can link all the things. Link all of the things. Yes. So um, for Parker Fit Body Bootcamp, mm -hmm. it's parkerfbbc.com. Okay. Um, for connection spot, spelled a little bit differently. There's so an it's X. Harder. There is an X. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, connectionspot.com, but it's spelled C-O-N-N-E-X-I-O-N-S-P-O-T.com. Don't ever do that for a business. Don't. <laughs> Yeah, the, the name should be spelled like it should be spelled. <laughs> so, just give me I a tip. love the X. <laughs> um, yeah, I think those are probably the okay. Easiest ones. Those are the yeah. easiest ones. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you, in your opinion, what is the one thing or place in people's lives that need a kickstart? What, what is does the... every everybody need a little kick in their pants on what to do to make their make themselves more productive? Well, or think, live a better life. Or live a better life. I think get off the sidelines. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think everybody, we're in a culture now that we're watching everybody do everything. And we no right? longer participate. Yeah, we can, and, get, we can go on Instagram and watch people lift weights. Yeah, we don't need to. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it's, and so, I mean, I think it's getting off the sidelines and really determining what it is you want in this life, mm -hmm. what it is that you're passionate about. Go try it. There's no risk. I know. Don't I tell people it. that all the time. Yeah. It's actually funny. I'm just going to go off for a, real, a second. But somebody was like, I think I want to start an organization business. And I'm like, okay, go do it. Yeah. Like, go sell it to somebody. Go go try it. Right. But don't, you don't have to start a whole business. You don't have to do no. a thing. Just go try it. And then if you love it, That's then right. go do it. And I think a lot of the time with entrepreneurs, they start businesses and they're not sure that they're going to even like doing being yeah. an entrepreneur or things like that. And then yeah. it just all kind of just crumbles because it's like, I actually really didn't love it. That's right. And I said, so yeah, I mean, test your idea. Go work somewhere, like volunteer your time somewhere of something that you love or, you know, all the things you talk about, oh, I wish I did or I want to do or mm -hmm. I can, you know. Just start. Don't let time pass. Just start. I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> this was welcome. fun. See? <laughs> <laughs>